everything was shocking about Kevin O'Brien's World Cup 100 against England. His hair, his shots, and the win. This is the last knot. My dad told me to say this. And that it was Kevin O'Brien. Even a decade later, he was never a major T20 player. He struggled to regularly break into county cricket ranks, despite the fact that many of the other Irish cricket players found no problem with that. And he really was, when you break it down, not much more than a bits and pieces player. But when he put in his bits, other teams were left in pieces. And when O'Brien stood, so did England. Far more so than his brother Niall or Trent Johnston, William Porterfield, Ed Joyce. You could also throw in Boyd Rankin to that list. Paul Sterling is a T20 Twitter darling and or even early career George Dockrell, who some thought would go on to play for England. They all appeared to have more skill or talent or higher ceilings than Kevin O'Brien. But when Ireland needed something superhuman, it was almost always him. There's a great moment in that 100 against England where at one stage O'Brien compliments Jimmy Anderson on a good ball. And Anderson asks how O'Brien would know what a good delivery is, which is a decent line. And O'Brien responded with the fact that he knew what a bad one was because he just smashed one of them away for six. Even better retort. But this is Jimmy Anderson, the most wickets of any seam bowler in test cricket. An absolute legend of his country and the wider sport at this stage. Just if nothing else for the fact he keeps taking wickets despite the fact he's really old. And you're talking about Kevin O'Brien, who never averaged 30 in one day internationals or 25 in T20s. And yet it was Kevin O'Brien sledging Jimmy Anderson, heaving 113 from 63 balls, breaking a world record, six sixes and beating England, which I suppose is the most amazing part of it. The whole thing was crazy. O'Brien was rated by no one outside of Ireland and he was slapping the ball around everywhere like no one ever had at a World Cup before. LinkedIn is part of my online writing course because there are so many cricketers and coaches that are on there. But even outside of that, me and a fellow journalist used to play a game with LinkedIn where we tried to guess what job a former Shield player may have based on their playing style. Surprisingly, we were often wrong. You, however, can use LinkedIn for far more important reasons like creating a job post in minutes, add the hashtag hiring and off you go. You can try screening questions to find people with the right skills and experiences because if you're a small business, well, LinkedIn is a large pond. So don't use this terrific platform to see what Graham Vimpani is up to since he's 100 against the West Indies. Instead, visit linkedin.com forward slash Inca, as in Inca, the back half of my podcast, Red Inca, and you can post a job ad for free. Terms and conditions to apply. And it was that day, probably as much as any other, that changed Ireland's history. Okay, and if it's not that day, when is it? Maybe it's the 2007 World Cup win over Pakistan. Well, in that one, O'Brien was the second top scorer behind his older brother Niall and remained unbeaten when Trent Johnston hit the winning runs. I don't know, what's the third most important game in Irish cricket history? It's probably their first test. And it wasn't going well for Ireland. The follow-on was enforced and it looked like they were going to get it absolutely smashed. And what does Kevin O'Brien do? He makes 100 in the follow-on and almost gives them enough to have a surprise victory over Pakistan. That's it. Kevin O'Brien was incredibly significant in the three most important games in Ireland's history. And yet, when you look at his wider record, O'Brien has never had much impact on the world of cricket at large. A few T20 franchise contracts, some List A stuff in England, but he rarely grabbed attention It was never an in-demand player on the franchise circus. But then you have his games for England. Some players are much better for their country than they are for their clubs. You could see that with a plotting power forward from the NBA who comes from some random non-American country and he turns up at the Olympics and suddenly he's this brutish enforcer. Or there's the journeying pro tennis player living the good life. And suddenly they're playing a Davis or Federation Cup and they're the best player in the world. And that's kind of how I always thought about Kevin O'Brien. But when you actually look at his numbers, it suggests he's been as good for everyone else as he's ever been for Ireland. The real difference is that when Kevin O'Brien is astonishing as a player, it is almost always for Ireland. In the first innings of that maiden test, the Irish top order was smashed in the face by the Pakistan bowlers. They were playing for lunch like it was their last meal. Gary Wilson was off getting his arm fixed and it was O'Brien who had to come in before there were 10 runs on the board. You're talking about a guy who loves to hit the ball really hard and is not a specialist batter. He shouldn't be in with that scoreline. 
And not only was he not made for that kind of batting, he wasn't a massive first-class player either. He'd only ever played two games in county cricket, one for Surrey and one for Notts. In fact, in his entire career, he only ended up with 47 first-class games overall. And yet here he is, being the most important batter in an Irish Test match. In fact, in that first innings, he was pretty good even as Ireland collapsed, and he's furious with himself that he couldn't actually help Ireland more. The weird thing is, he didn't even notice that he was the player that stands up. And maybe that's because in so many big moments for Irish cricket, he kind of always was. I think to many of us, Kevin O'Brien is the face of Irish cricket at this point. I mean, there was never a time when we thought that England would come calling and take him away. He had over 300 caps, more than any other Irish player. And he always seemed to be available and on call for them, almost any role that they needed. And while there are other associate nations that have problems with being seen as, you know, a team full of expats at time, Ireland had O'Brien, an Irish underage cricketer with an Irish playing brother, and a father, and this flock of ginger hair. In O'Brien, Ireland had a poster child for Irish cricket. He was their giant ginger mascot who hit sixes and wins games against England. Of course, it wasn't just his six-hitting talent. We actually don't know how good a player he would have been in first-class cricket. If you go back to that knock in Malahide, his 50 came up off 100 balls, which was the complete inverse of what he did against England in that World Cup game. He probably had more skills, but he didn't have the chance to develop because Ireland was essentially amateur as he started and semi-professional for most of his career. And because he didn't get the county call-ups, he just kind of developed on his own. What we know of O'Brien was the bludgeoner. But perhaps if Ireland had been a developed nation well before when it comes to cricket, we would have seen more of O'Brien the nerdler. I mean, there's no doubt when you look back at the highlights of that Malahide game, at times he does look like an ogre trying to play with a children's tea set. And you would have thought that the main idea would have been for Ireland to try and draw that game. But with O'Brien out there, he obviously wanted to score quite quickly. But something else happens in that test match in Malahide. Once he gets going in the second innings against Pakistan, it didn't matter that he wasn't a top-tier batting talent. Pakistan knew who O'Brien was. And so even though they were well on top in the game, they moved all the field out. They got nervous by him. There aren't too many players in the world with his kind of record that would make people feel that way. But we do feel different about O'Brien, especially since that innings against England. O'Brien may not have ended up having the career that everyone hoped he would, but he got a lot more respect within cricket and from opposition teams just because they knew what his top end could be, which was scary. And I keep mentioning the knock against England because it was so good. In fact, it was so good that he wrote basically an entire book about that innings. And there's some great stories uh, from the Irish team about that day, like the fact that he misfielded early on and started to look very grumpy, which ended with a comment of Ed Joy saying he'll probably go and make 100 now. But the Irish top order, who were by far and away their strength at that time, were all in the change room while Kevin O'Brien was batting. They didn't even see the start of his innings. They were lamenting the fact that they were going to lose to England in a game they thought they could have won. And they knew Kevin O'Brien, and even they didn't have faith in him. Since that day, almost every time he's walked out to bat, which is quite a lot, being that he's played a million games for Ireland alone, someone has probably thought about that innings. It really did stick more than most innings do. And the other reason that it stuck is because he didn't really do that much big outside of that. Like when Ireland played that first test, O'Brien only ever had one first class 100. He made 171 not out against Kenya in a game where his brother Niall and Andre Botha both made centuries and Ireland made 578 for four. His previous 100 for Ireland was actually that World Cup game against Ireland. And so think about that first test playing for Ireland, probably batting a little bit too high up in the order against Pakistan. Day one rained and it was cloudy all the way through and the wicket gave a lot of assistance to the seamers. And the seamers in Pakistan's case were Muhammad Amir and Muhammad Abbas. And Ireland's top order, who had grown up against county wickets and had done very well in international cricket, completely failed against that bowling. So instead you had someone who hadn't made 100 for Ireland in a very, very long time, in a different format, in a different situation, who'd only ever made one first class 100 again. Of all the people you would expect to stand up, he would be the least likely. But... If you're an Irish supporter or an Irish player, or hell, just one of us, a casual person on the outside, you kind of feel that Kevin O'Brien was always the kind of player who was going to stand up at that moment. That first game at Malahide was the most anticipated game in Irish cricket history. And the man by his own account was getting too old and not used to batting for five hours was the man who stood up again. Kevin O'Brien's second first-class 100 was Ireland's first in a test match.
And if Irish cricket had a player type they're known for, it would be all-rounders who weren't quite that, that top level, but often compensated with the bat or with the ball to get it done. Stuart Thompson, Trent Johnston, John Mooney, Alex Cusack, Curtis Camphart is probably another one of those at the moment. So in some ways for Irish cricket, Kevin O'Brien was just another one of those players. And there is almost nothing special about the skills that he brings to that Ireland team. There are and will continue to be better Ireland players than O'Brien. He was never their best and possibly not even the best in his own family. But because of when he stood up, you wonder if there'll ever be another player who will play three innings as vital as he did for Irish cricket. Kevin O'Brien was there when they beat Pakistan. He was the man who upset England. And it was him who stood up in their first test. Ireland as an international side has a long history. But as the team that we know, it really starts in the 07 World Cup with O'Brien at the non-striker's end. 11 years after that, Ireland were a test nation and everyone knows that Ireland play cricket now. And almost in any game we've ever seen, Kevin O'Brien has been there. And you look at all the times he stood up for Ireland and you wonder if we'd have them at all without him. There were certainly better players for Ireland, but Kevin O'Brien may be the most important player in their history. The man who stood up so that Ireland could too.